In this series of videos, we'll take a look at scripting in Reactor. Strictly speaking, at this time, it's a better feature. So whatever I'm showing you today may change. It's subject to change, but it's cool. And it has already been around for a while and it needs a lot of polish and further features to be really useful, but it's so powerful. And for some of you guys, it's gonna be an exciting favorite feature. So scripting is that you can use JavaScript to uh, run a script whenever you press a button or receive a trigger, and then you can make that do things on the devices that you have connected. So much of what Reactor already does in the configuration tab by structured configuration of objects that has some certain actions to it, much of that can be done with scripting in the cases where the Reactor structures is not sufficient. You need to kind of bend the rules to make things happen and so on. So this is what we'll go through. I'll open your eyes up to those amazing features and uh, yeah, you'll take it from there, I would basically expect. So what I've done is to create a configuration with some examples that uh, we can apply on a quick bar. And a quick bar is a surprising little unit from Skahoy with six buttons and maybe the most configurations of any panel we have. Um, the, the explanation of why we have all these configurations for quick bar is probably that we have something called a what is it called? Quick class, which is a concept that basically takes six four-way buttons and apply um, or, or build a little configuration around them. And you'll find that these quick classes can be applied to many different panels where we have reserved a section of six buttons like this. But today we'll just be working with the quick bar in its um, in its basic form, as you see it right here. It is a control panel, six four-way buttons, six displays. And for that, we have chosen a configuration for this video that is called demo scripting, All right? So we'll take this one. Uh, we will not actually connect any physical quick bar because we have, as usual in these videos, our configuration and simulator that will be more than helpful to um, basically prove the point. Now, when we are working with scripting, one of the uh, things that we definitely need to improve is logging. We need to have a way to uh, to build our scripts and then follow along as we um, are coding them and, and be able to, to see, uh, you know, how it responds to values and make calculations and so on. So, uh, but, but the best I can offer today is to basically open a new tab and then open up your uh, blue pill device in this tab, go to the packages page, find reactor and look in the logs of reactor. So you click on reactor here and then you have the logs over here. But I will separate this out into a window of its own so that we can follow this on the side whenever it's needed. All right, so um, I'll just keep that over here and then make this window slightly smaller so we can follow along. Basically, we'll see some, some um, uh, output from the scripts over here. Let's get to it. Basically, what we have in this configuration for the quick pad is um, the, the, the things that we'll be looking at at first here would be these scripted buttons. And we start with the first one. So it's this behavior on the configuration, this button. And if we um, look at the configuration of this one, we can see there's no master behavior in this case. So it's just built ground up and we can look at the feedback. So we'll see that if we go to the emulation, it is in a pink color, it is currently dimmed. It has a title called script one. It says locking output here. And then if we look at the conditional feedback, it will be highlighted when the script is running because this is an active if condition you have never seen before. Behavior script is running equals true. So this IO reference here is um, the, the is running uh, modifier to behavior script is true if the script is running for the behavior. And that's the first thing we're looking at. I can um, make a little plot spoiler here. We have two types of scripts. We have behavior scripts. So they are, re they are related to a behavior that you can apply to button knobs, faders, joysticks. And then we have layer scripts which are like background scripts that can be running. You can turn them on and off with a variable and we'll be looking at both during this series. But today we'll start with just this basic script here. So we see we have a little bit of feedback and then basically everything else is the event script we have down here. Before we look at that script, let's just quickly show the JSON of this whole component because I don't think it's too overwhelming actually. If we look at it, and, and you should have seen this a ton of times if you have followed our advanced videos, you know that behind all our configuration we have JSON. This is a snippet of JSON that belongs to this particular behavior, the scripted button number one. And that's a part of a larger JSON structure. If we click edit raw here, then you see basically everything put together in one large structure. So. Um, that's that. That's what we are looking at 
at the bottom when we show JSON for our behavior. But you see the script itself is in this line, and that's a very long line. And there's a good reason why you need the editor you'll see in a moment for that, because we have all these new lines and tabs and so on, which is impossible to edit in JSON directly. But let me explain. First of all, the description here is the description of what the script does. And that's a description I've written. Then we have the max runtime, which is seconds, the number of seconds that it is allowed to run at most. If it doesn't complete on its own, it's going to complete or be killed after one second. And that's an important thing because you want to be careful not to run scripts for you know eternity. So therefore, we build in a max runtime like this in uh, by default. Then we have the default feedback uh, and feedback conditional that uh, we just looked at a moment ago. So that's no surprise to us. Let's look at the description. It says on every trigger, when we press the button down and when we release it, it will run this script that simply outputs text to the lock. There is a max runtime of one second that will eventually kill the script. Scripts are only started if they don't run already. The button is highlighted if the script is running. Let's see if that's true. But before I do so, if we show more and if we uh, click here on this little icon, here you have the script editor. And uh, it's a nice thing to press format code just to align the code if it's messed up a little bit, not too much in this case. But what you see here is the script that we are about to run. So we should expect to see over here in the logging, we should see the message hello. We should then see the message world. We should see a message this normally wouldn't blah, blah, blah. And then finally, we should see a message. Oh, we should not see this message because the script would be killed before we get to this point. Why? Because we have these sleep statements and sleep is one of the five functions that are currently is currently available inside the scripting engine. Basically, actually, if you hold control and press spacebar, then you see the five functions. We can get the event that started the script. We can get an IO reference first value. That, that is how we uh, grab values from an atom switcher or a variable. And we can set IO references in return. And finally, we can sleep the script just wait basically for a number of milliseconds. Let's uh, go back here and then click this button and see what happens. Okay, let me just check this. I'll just reload. This seems to be probably some scripting stuff from something else. Let's just kill this guy here because I know from a video that is coming a little bit ahead of, of this one, uh, we have a background script running on a layer. So I'll just make sure that this doesn't interfere with, with us. Okay, let's press this button. So we have the script running for basically a second and I'll now reload the logs over here. And let's just scroll down. Let's see what happens. And we can follow along the script. We see there's a message here, hello, that corresponds to this guy. And it comes from this scripted button here. We have the message world, we have the message this would normally, uh, this normally wouldn't print because the script is killed, but we had set the runtime to one second. And then finally, um, it times out. Actually, this message here says that the script was killed, uh, timed out uh, because it exceeded the one second runtime. And that's because of this sleep statement right there. So, okay, that was the first script. And now I want to move on to the next one on this button because that does a little bit more that is more useful, but at least now I got you started. And that was the main point of that. Let's uh, just disable our simulation button and then click this one and see what we find inside. Actually, let's just go straight to the JSON because I find that is quicker way for us to really see what's happening. Well, if you look at the the JSON code for this behavior, you see that we are defining a behavior variable. So that that is a local variable called display label. That is, if we look at the feedback down here, actually the variable that we are showing in the display, the one that currently says hello, and it has a default value of hello, you see that is written in here, we can accept any value. So it means we can just set it to any string we want. And um, that's it for that. So event handlers, we have one called stop script. And it's uh, accepting a binary trigger. It will on act up. Um, it, it it will apparently activate an IO reference called behavior script stop. And that is another one. We had the one called is running that will return true. So that's a read only thing. Here we have one that we can like an action we can execute, which is stopping the script. 
So in this case, and especially if we look at this script, you can see it has a max runtime of minus one. And minus one is the same as saying, let the script run forever. So in this case, we need some way to stop it again. And then adding this one to an event handler on act up. In other words, when we release the button, we will uh, find that the, the script is being stopped by this action, then it will stop running. We could also just quick, and, and you see as before, we have the feedback conditional that will light it up in, in pink whenever we uh, have the script running on the button. So let's just see if, um, if this happens in a moment, but first check the description. On button down trigger, the script prints the current value of the variable display label and then goes on to rotating the value of this label. On button up, the script will halt, but this is done uh, by a regular event stop script. Yes, as we just saw, the button is highlighted if the script is running. Let's try it out, all right? So we just go over to the simulation mode here, and then, uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. We have not even seen what is in the script, so let's just check that. Okay, let's just format the code quickly. Okay, so what's going on in here? We are basically, no, wait. Let's just check it. Let's just check it. Okay. Uh, whenever you open a script, it opens up in a new uh, tab. So um, you basically have to get used to going a little bit back and forth here, which is also actually nice. But now I press and hold. And you see it is rotating a value. And now I release and the script is stopped because it stops rotating a value. Okay. I press it down. It rotates a value. I release. It stops. Press, rotates, release, it stops. Okay, so what's happening in between? Well, first of all, I'm getting the event that is reaching me. And then I'm checking, is this event a binary event by checking if dot binary is undefined. And if it's not undefined, and if the uh, binary event is pressed, in other words, I pressed it down, because if pressed is false, it means that I released it. That's the act up event. If that happens, and by the way, I'm not, de I'm not detecting any edges here on the event, but I could do that also if I wanted to. Um, I am then getting the current value of the variable display label. And then I print it out in the log. Okay, so let's just go over here and check. Actually, it says new value for display label, hello minus two, hello minus three, and so on. All right, so it's uh, that that's this line that we see in the log files. Then I keep going for as long as one is larger than zero, which is going to be true for all eternity, I guess. And then we have a equals zero up to five, increasing a every time. We create a new label by taking the string hello, adding a plus one. So that means one up to five. Then we are setting a new value for the label. Oh, by the way, the current label was further up. That's the current label. That's the line we had up here, line number six. But line number 12 is what we see here. New label, new label, new label, and so on. And then I'm setting the IO reference. In other words, I'm writing it back to the variable display label. And then I'm sleeping for 500 milliseconds until I do the same again. Actually, this means that we should be able, no, 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 wait. No, we have no way to see the value. These are variables that belongs to a layer. The variable that we have defined here today is one that belonged to the um, behavior here. This is the variable display label sitting right there. And we have no way to actually monitor its value unless we print it out up here, which we did. So um, that's fine. Let's just try it again. Press and hold 500 milliseconds rotation of the values changing, releasing again, stopping the script. All right, so there you go. Now you have taken a step a little bit closer to something that you could imagine would be useful seeing the script getting started, getting stopped, how we can have uh, a little bit of, of debugging over here um, in, in this one. And I think I'll end this video by just showing you how could you actually inspect the event object. And I have a nice little trick for that. So um, let's just click this to edit the script here. Okay. And I, yeah, so now I have a new edit top again. I constantly forget. But let's just do this. Then, um, up here, what I would like to do is to console log JSON stringify. If you guys know Java script, then you will know this. And that basically takes the event object coming out here and then makes a JSON string out of it. So that helps us to inspect a little bit which 
um, which uh, objects and arrays are um, inside of this, or which keys and arrays and fields and whatnot is inside of this uh, event object that we are receiving from the get event method that we are calling. Okay, let's save this file. Go back here, and we, we need to look at the logs now because we'll first, you know, as the log is, is starting, when we press the button, we'll see the event coming out to us. So I'll just press and hold, and then I'm releasing quite quickly. Let's go over here, reload the logs, and then you'll see right here, we have actually the object printed out. So what you see is that there is a field called binary. That in itself is an object that has the pressed equals true when I pressed it down, and then it also has a field called edge, and edge for all means the bottom edge of the button. See, that's interesting because this is a four-way button. So if I press the upper edge of the button, should I see something else? I guess so. So I just press the upper edge. I mean, it's still rotating because we are not detecting on the edge. But if we look at what we received back here, so if you look at the event once again here, you see now the edge is one, pressed equals true, and so forth. All right. Thanks for watching this video. There'll be more in this series about scripting in Reactor, and hopefully I will inspire you to expand your skills, your ninja capabilities with Reactor as a broadcast automation monitoring and control system.